to the Holy One give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give Given Jesus Christ is Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ is Son. church all right so this next song I normally don't take too long to talk between songs but I need to set this next song up in the Bible we read in ancient Israel there were these high places where idolatry and the worship of evil spirits cropped up and the people at times were not obedient they didn't tear down these these uh, shrines and altars uh, these idols that were put above the worship of God. So sometimes in our lives we have these things we have to tear down in order to get the devil out. You know, we have to get the devil out of our lives, out of our families, out of our 
out of our country. So today we're going to tear the devil's kingdom down. Amen? Amen.
You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken.
ancient of days from every nation all of creation but for the ancient of days and every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory every knee shall bow but your throne in worship you will be exalted O God and your kingdom shall not pass away O ancient of days on this day, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We serve you. We serve you alone, Lord. We just pray that you would that we'd be faithful to you and turn away from fear Acknowledge that you are our Father. We are your children. And we want to be obedient to you. And we want to serve you in every capacity that you've commanded us. We praise that we would go from this place today. When, when we go, we're not leaving yet. <laughs> oh. When we go from this place, we would seek to serve you with our whole hearts, our whole lives, everything at our disposal. Lord, because you've said to whom much is given, much is required. And you've given us so much here, Lord. The church here in America, we're the, in the most wealthy nation in the history of the world. We just pray that you'd give us the courage to speak out when we see things that are of the devil. I do not be afraid to proclaim the name of Jesus, the powerful, powerful name of Jesus, name above all names. Excuse me. 
so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. Sing it. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you in this place today. And we do give thanks in this place for all your goodness to us, Lord God. Thank you that we can worship you in song, that you've given us that capacity. What a blessing it is to be able to lift our voices and to worship our Creator and to thank you and to bless you. Father, we pray for your guiding through our time together today. Let us find your presence. Let us. We just pray that the Spirit of God and the Word of God would touch every heart today, touch every spirit, minister deeply into us, Lord God. We've come to gather in your name to hear from you, so we pray you do it, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're going to make one slight change to our uh, uh, service. We're going to have a time here to meet and greet people, but we're going to, we've kind of let that get out of control time-wise, okay? So we're going to try to cut it down to about a minute or two. So pick a couple people to talk to, and uh, we're going to come back together a little quicker than we normally do. And once again, this is going, if you want to, um, this is going to be mask-only area on this half. So, um, so only be on this side to greet people if you've got a mask on. But we'll be back with you in just a minute. Greet somebody around you this right, morning. Right, that's it. God bless. I was still longer than it was supposed to be, but uh, I ran into a few things I had to take care of. And uh, so, here's the deal. First of all, I want to thank all of you for being here today, especially if you're a guest with us. And if you are, uh, we'd be delighted if you could take a minute to fill out the little uh, Connect card you should have gotten on the way in if our greeters gave that to you along with the other goodies and our brochure and some other things. But immediately following the service, we can have more of what we just had there. So we're going to take, more, take some of that out of the meet and greet time. Uh, please hang around afterwards to meet people. we got some treats and some coffee and things in the big room next door. So we want to make you aware of that. Uh, let me go through a few things just to let you know what's going on at the Ridge. Oh, and you can fill that card out. We're going to take an offering a few minutes. Did I say that? And you can just drop it in the offering for us. We would appreciate that, just so we can know a little bit more about you. Um, CORE is up and running. Hallelujah. They had a great time here yesterday. Uh, had their uh, f Friendsgiving, and uh, the ministry is going forward. They're meeting on Wednesday nights. They get together to eat every week, which I think is a great idea. They're meeting at 6.30 this week, and it's being catered by Zianos, and they're paying for it. So everybody wants to go, but, but you've got to be between 18 and 27, so that cut me out. But... Um, uh, yeah, you're, I'm identifying as a 25-year-old. My, my grandkids are disputing that. If you act like a 25-year-old, like yeah. Um, if you, I might have to wear a mask, but anyway. 6.30 here at the Ridge. So uh, uh, be there, invite your friends, invite young adults that you know about. We're really excited about that. Just a reminder, Sunday School is still meeting at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings here right before this service, also in the Fellowship Hall next door. Uh, for those of you that get our daily bread, the new ones came in for the next quarter, which begins uh, actually December, December, January, February. I put them on the little rack in the back on the prayer table right back here to my right, your left. And uh, feel free to pick those up. Those are free. And uh, we might make that available. Ba Men's Bible study will be meeting tonight at 6. And um, also the prayer meeting will not be meeting this week because it's Thanksgiving Day. So we're going to take a week off there. And don't forget about the Blessing Corner uh, over here on the other side of the kitchen. If you get in the Fellowship Hall and go uh, east from there. Lots of stuff there to give away. People are just uh, things of value that they don't want anymore, and you can bring your own things. And uh, take whatever you want, and please take it. We would appreciate that so much. Well, we are going to worship the Lord of our giving now. Hey, what? I have an announcement. Okay. Just stand, don't take that off, leave that okay, there. Okay, not supposed to take this off. That's where sorry. you're going to stand, so um, you're going to pull this away. Don't sit right. down, don't sit down. Don't sit down. All right. Stand here, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting this straight. Ladies, we had a fabulous time last night, um, so go do your next chapter. We will meet again on December 5th for our next meeting. However, Laura has the envelope full of Secret Santas. Everybody's name who's a part of our group is on a Secret Santa um, piece of paper. So make sure if you are here today and part of our little group that you get one from her. 
and she'll check you off, okay? Is there anything else we need? Yeah, and that will do, we'll do our Secret Santa on, I think it's December 19th, is two weeks from the 5th. So um, that's when we'll have our Christmas party and do our Secret Santa, okay? Thank you. All right, ushers, if you could come forward and uh, I'll pray for this offering. Uh, just come on up now and we'll pray and then we'll collect our offering for today. And um, as always, this is a time of worship. And uh, so we're just going to ask that God blesses it. Father, we come before you today with such thanksgiving in our heart for all that you do for us, Lord. And we just pray that you will take our gifts this morning and that uh, you will use them for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. As we're taking the offering, let me read something to you that I got emailed this week. This is so cool. Um, almost all of you were involved in one way, shape, or another of the food distribution back at the end of October. I got an email from Felicia um, Kowalski, who's from the Cornerstone Youth Center in, Mon in Monroeville. It's a ministry, and they collected boxes both times. And she sent me this. She said, I have to share with you another story because it is just crazy how much of an impact this had. One of my board members drove up to help us pick up boxes. He then drove around and distributed them to people he knew could use them. He took a box to a man who has gone through a divorce recently. When Jason handed over the box to him, he was completely overcome by his emotion. He told Jason that after his child support and his bills came out, that he didn't have anything left over for food. And he prayed that God would find some food for him. Then Jason showed up. I simply love how God works. And you know, friends, we have a lot of stories like that, and it'll be fun to just listen to some of them unwind over time. But it's been a great, a great blessing, and I just so much appreciate um, all that um, all of you have uh, were a part of this and uh, played a part in making this just a tremendous ministry. Well, we are going to go to the Word of God now, and... Uh, I apologize, I'm just a day late and a dollar short here, but I'm just about ready. Well, while he's doing that, I have a praise. My sister and I were estranged for almost 40 years and recently have reconciled. And last night, she and I had a conversation. It was just, every time I talk with her now, I come away with such a joy and such a happiness over this restoration and just fun. Like, we just talk. We have so much fun when we talk. It's just, I'm just blown away. Now I'm praying that God will make a way for me to go visit her sometime and stay with her and go hiking in the mountains with her in Northern California. That's my goal. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's just awesome. It's just awesome. God is good. God is great. Amen. Well, this morning our scripture reading is going, as we reflect on Thanksgiving, we're going to begin in Psalm 136. We're going to go in a couple different places. And actually, I want you to just watch the screen today with me as, if you could, and you'll understand why, because we're going to do something we've not done before, at least since I've been here. We're going to do what's called a responsive reading. Eileen is going to read, and then you're going to respond. Now, in this particular psalm, this part is going to be very easy for you because you say the same thing every time. Uh, four words. His love endures forever. We're not going to do the entire psalm, but there's plenty here to give a wonderful way to thank and praise the Lord. There's going to be other readings today, but this will be the only one that we read responsively. So, Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. His love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens. His love forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters. His love forever. Who made the great lights. His love forever. The sun to govern the day. The moon and stars to govern the night. His love forever. He remembered us in our low estate His love forever. and freed us from our enemies. His love forever. He gives food to every creature. His love forever. 
Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. Hallelujah. Now, for most of my life, the epitome of serious wealth would be the millionaire. Um, we even have a popular game show called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? But that seems to have changed over the last few years. Now there's more talk these days about the billionaire. No one talks about people who are merely millionaires anymore. Uh, if you want to be talked about today, you've got to be in the billionaire class, right? Somebody suggested that they have a version of who wants to be a millionaire, but all the contestants are billionaires. <laughs> be more of a threat, take their money away. But anyway, in any case, many people long for the money and the lifestyle of the uber wealthy. But let's back up the clock for 100 years. In 1916, the wealthiest man in the entire world was John D. Rockefeller. And depending on how you would measure such things, many consider him to be the wealthiest American ever. He was a billionaire back in the day when a billion dollars could really go somewhere. <laughs> I mean, it was worth a lot more than it would be worth today. He lived in this elaborate house. Uh, it's called... Kaikuit, I think is how you pronounce it. It's a British thing. You remember, know how the British, they name their houses, and some of that followed over to the East Coast for a while. But as a man of such means, he had absolutely the best of everything, um, of everything that existed back then anyway. So how many of you would like to be a billionaire? How many of you would like to be able to trade places with John D. Rockefeller? A writer named... Donald Boudreau, a world-class expert on economics, wrote an article a few years ago titled, The Average American Today is Richer Than John D. Rockefeller. Now notice the subtitle. She is incalculably richer, in fact. You know, if Mr. Rockefeller had air conditioning in that house, and he probably did not, he certainly would not enjoy it anywhere else, not at any of his friends' homes, not in a restaurant, not in his business, not anywhere. Heating was extremely inefficient back then, too. Probably had trouble keeping his home uh, warm during the winter. He'd have, it wouldn't be as, as efficient and as comfortable as yours is today. If he wanted to go to Europe or Asia, it would take the richest man in the world several days under the best of circumstances. What do you think he watched on television or listened to on the radio? Neither of them existed. He could play phonographs on a record, but it was, there was no such thing as stereo. You just get that, you know, and you listen in, in one dimension. His telephone, young people, was attached to a wall. His luxury limo was far more likely to break down while he was being chauffeured around town than what your Chevy would be while you drive it across country. And you would get a far better ride, much better engineering in your car. Of course, if his car broke down, somebody would have to be walking to get help. Can't even imagine that today, can we? After the service today, right here in the little town of Fort Wayne, you can go out to dozens and one of dozens and dozens of restaurants and order up Chinese, Vietnamese, Japanese, Korean, Mexican, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Mediterranean, Ethiopian, Thai, Indian, and who knows what else? Food. And it's all really affordable. You can even get authentic, now you can, authentic Chicago deep dish pizza in Fort Wayne. <laughs> Mr. Rockefeller could have none of these. Even the best medical care back then was horrible by today's standards, no matter how much money you had. Dental care wasn't any better. The great care wasn't available. It hadn't even been developed yet. And the richest man in the world with all his money could not buy the veterinary care for his animals that is available to every one of us at very affordable prices. Dr. Boudreau concludes with this, by 1916 standards, I am today more than a billionaire. 
It means, at least given my preferences, I am today materially richer than was John D. Rockefeller in 1916. And if, as I think is true, my preferences here are not unusual, then nearly every middle-class American today is richer than America's richest man a mere 100 years ago. So why is it that gratefulness is so hard to find today? Why is it, or what is it, that's placed thankfulness in such short supply? In mathematics, I hope you don't mind, indulge me here for a minute. In mathematics, we have a phrase, inversely proportional. And what this means is one thing increases, another thing decreases at the same rate. So at the rate one thing increases, the other uh, goes down. And it almost seems to me today that material possessions and gratefulness are inversely proportional. That is, the more people have, the less thankful they are. If we were only allowed to retain the things that we've been intentionally thankful for over the past 24 hours, or the past week, or the past month, or the past year, what would you have left? What would we have left if the only things you could have tomorrow were things that you've, all, you've been thankful for, specifically thankful for in the last 12 months? How often have we thanked God for the abundance of food that we have, for air conditioning and for cars and mobile phones and for this building? And you turn the light switch on, you expect electricity to come on. You turn the heat up, you expect the house to get warmer or cooler, depending. Have you thanked him for decent clothes and for safe neighborhoods and for clean air and for the freedom? We have so much. Eileen is the manager of the natural, natural living section of her store. She has an inventory of over 11,000 products. Try to get your head around that. And that's just her department one of several, and that's just one store. That just staggers my mind to try to comprehend that. Is anybody amazed at the plenty of things and the plenty of choices that we have everywhere we turn? Is anyone truly grateful to God for all that we have? Or have we come to a point where we just expect it to be this way? We just expect to have choices. We expect to have all this stuff. Many people around the world, of course, don't have those kind of things and those kind of choices. And it's so easy to take things for granted. And the problem is, is if we're not thankful for the things we already have, then no matter how much we have, we look around and we see other things and we want those too. And if we can't have them, then we become ungrateful. And we become unsatisfied with life. Martin Rinkhart wanted to go into ministry as a young man. It took him about 15 years from the time he began in theology school until he took a position um, of archdeacon in Ellenburg, Germany in 1617, the year that the Thirty Years' War began. He began his ministry in a war zone. His city, Eilenburg, was walled and it became a refuge for political and military fugitives. But of course, that led to overcrowding and deadly pestilence and famine. You think we've got issues. And then, even with the walls, armies overran it three times. And you know, when you live in a place like that and soldiers come into your town, you know what they do? They come into your house and they say, we're coming to stay here for a while until we get called away. And they eat everything that you have. They make themselves at home whether you want them there or not. And on top of this, there were just tons of sick and hungry all over the city. The Swedes were moving across the countryside and spreading devastation, destruction. And the city had become an out overcrowded refuge from those from the country districts where the Swedes had come through. And in the midst of this, Pastor Rinkhart sat down and penned these words, Nun danken alle Gott. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices who wondrous things hath done in whom his world rejoices, 
who from our mother's arms hath blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Wow. Reading from Psalm 9. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. Ungratefulness may be due simply that we have too many choices in our life to even understand. For example, you ever sit down with somebody and try to watch a movie? Well, let's decide which movie we have we want to watch. Well, that, that narrows it down to about a billion choices. And now you have to decide, you want to view it on Netflix, Apple TV, pay-per-view, Amazon, Chromecast, Hulu, Roku, or YouTube. And after you decide that, then you, do you want to watch it on your phone, your tablet, your laptop, your desktop computer, computer, or your TV? Hmm. Those options I gave you there alone give you 40 choices on how to watch the movie. And we haven't even picked it out yet. Instead of becoming more grateful for all these fantastic choices we have, these choices create stress. The things that are supposed to make our lives happier and more content and more pleased instead make us more uptight. Abraham Lincoln set aside one day a year for Americans to focus on thanking God for all that we have. One day out of the entire year isn't that much, yet we still have trouble getting a handle on it. Thanksgiving is a very unusual holiday in America, and I suppose it has the fact to do the, the way that you can't really monetize it or exploit it for selling things. Every other holiday can be exploited. Ha Halloween's getting bigger and bigger. I believe they say now it's the second biggest holiday. And of course, we know who number one is. Christmas season has already been oversized for a long time, but it keeps growing as well. And we have this little holiday squeezed in between the two. And it used to, um, we have really, I should say, nobody has any idea what really to do with it except to joke about overeating and watch football. And if this isn't bad enough, somebody came up with this great idea of Black Friday. So at least we had a Thanksgiving weekend. Now we got to push down to a day. Now Black Friday has been backing up more and more into Thursday. There's just no room for Thanksgiving in our lives. Why is it so difficult to simply set aside time to be thankful to God? You know, Thanksgiving's even an outlier in the church. You look through your hymn book, you know how many hymns we have on Thanksgiving? I just read you the words to one of them. You might be lucky to find two others for some reason. And how many worship choruses? I only know of one, and we sang it today. Now, we like to praise and worship the Lord, and that's, that's great. I mean, most of our songs are about praising and worship Him, and that, that's just fine. But why so little emphasis on simply finding ways and time to thank Him? Just to thank Him. Reading from Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. We've seen in the past how true forgiveness is one of the most powerful ways for us to find freedom from things in our lives from the past. Well, you know what? I think thanksgiving can be very powerful too. It can be a cure. It can be a cure for envy. If you're being envious, maybe thanksgiving would undermine that feeling a little bit. If a person has a critical spirit, I believe that being thankful can neutralize that spirit. Thanksgiving can even be a cure for anger. But it has to be a true and pure gratefulness, unconditional, no buts. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful, dependable, beautiful car I have. But I wish I could have had a Mercedes. But thank you for this one anyway. Thank you for this home you've given me, which I can afford the mortgage on, and I live in a safe neighborhood, and it's great. 
but I really wish we could have bought that one on the west side. Thank you, Lord, for this husband of mine. I better not go there. All right. <laughs> Sometimes it just seems outrageous how hard it is to be thankful. There's a story told about a woman who's walking by the seaside with her little boy by the ocean. She's holding him by the hand, and all at once a big wave came, and it swept him away, and out, to the, out in the ocean he went. And of course, she panicked. She started screaming. There were lifeguards there, and they, they heard, and they made calls. And so all at once you had people rushing to the scene, and you had lifeguards there. And the Coast Guard came, and they had a series of boats, and there were helicopters that came in. They searched everywhere, this gigantic effort, and they found the boy. And they got him and they brought him on to the beach and his lungs are full of air so they pumped him, pumped all the water out and, and um, pumped all the water out of him and uh, he started reviving and his eyes opened and he came back and they stood him up and they took him to his mother and they said, here he is. And she said, he had a hat. Okay. Go ahead. Psalm 107, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. You know, even science has found enormous benefits to being thankful. Um, here are seven scientifically proven benefits of gratitude that will motivate you to give up or to give thanks year-round. Uh, research reveals gratitude can have these seven benefits. Number one, gratitude opens up the door to more relationships. You'll be an easier person to deal with. You'll, you'll attract more friends to you being thankful. Number two, gratitude improves physical health. Not surprisingly, grateful people are also most, more likely to take care of their health. They exercise more often and are more, often like, than, uh, are more likely to attend regular checkups with their doctors, which is likely to contribute to further longevity. Number three, gratitude improves psychological health. Gratitude reduces a multitude of toxic emotions, ranging from envy and resentment to frustration and regret. Gratitude effectively increases happiness and reduces depression. That's a scientist talking. Number four, gratitude enhances empathy and reduces aggression. Number five, grateful people sleep better. Number six, gratitude improves self-esteem. And number seven, gratitude increases mental strength. So developing an attitude of gratitude is one of the simplest ways to improve satisfaction with your life. And in fact, gratitude must, may be one of the most overlooked tools that we have access to every day. It doesn't cost anything to be thankful. It doesn't take much time. But the benefits are enormous. Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the, Lord, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. A one-week study was conducted in which people were asked to take five minutes a day at the same time every day to write down three things they were thankful for. They didn't have to be big things, but they had to be concrete and specific, such as, I'm thankful for the delicious Thai takeout dinner I had last night, or I'm thankful that my daughter gave me a hug today, or I'm thankful that my boss complimented me on my work. The participants simply expressed thanks for three specific things at the same time every day for one week, just one week. All right, you got to picture that. Now listen to what happens. At the end of one month, the researchers found, followed up and found out that those who practiced gratitude, and of course they had a control group that didn't, they were happier and less depressed. 
Remarkably, after three months, the participants who had been part of the one-week experiment were still more joyful and content. Incredibly, after the six-month mark, they were still happier, less anxious, and less depressed. That's being thankful for just one week. The researchers hypothesized that the simple practice of writing down three Thanksgivings a day over the course of a week primed the participants' minds to search for the good in their lives. There's a huge lesson in here for us. And of all people, as followers of Jesus, we have a lot of stuff to be thankful for. So I'm going to give a challenge. Our challenge this week is going to do exactly what we just read about. I'm going to challenge you to find three things to be thankful about and to do this one, day, one time a day. And since we're close to noon today, because you're going to do the first one in just a couple minutes, I'll suggest you do it at lunchtime, to thank God for three specific things. Now, this isn't one of those, thank you, Lord, for all my blessings. That's too general. Find something specific like, Thank you for the reliable car that got me to church and back again today. Or for a kind word that somebody offered to you this week. Or perhaps a surprise financial blessing. If, you're an un, if you are an untidy person, you can get these all the time. Did you know that? Digging through things, it's like, oh, I, <laughs> here's a $10 bill. Eileen was telling me, a story, oh, her sister told a story last night about, uh, was it her, her granddaughter? Her granddaughter who came to visit her and she gave her some piece of mail and she was playing with it. And she says, why don't you just open it up? And it was a piece of junk mail she was going to throw away. And she opened it up and it had a $2 bill in it. She said, man, I got to open up all my junk mail now. So you get a little blessing like that and thank God for it. Maybe a new opportunity that's come into your life or perhaps a persistent, wonderful thing in your life that you've come to take for granted. Thank you, Lord, that my wife did my laundry again this week right? When's the last time you thank God for that? Perhaps a special person in your life, a spouse or a grandchild or a friend or somebody else who has just done something or said something. Can we find three things a day to be thankful for? Is that possible? And let's make a plan to do this every day at lunchtime from now on through Thanksgiving Day. That's not even a whole week, but perhaps beyond that. It'd be a good pattern to get into to give thanks. And we give thanks to God. We give thanks. I don't know what people don't believe in God thank God for. You know, we talked about that before. If you're in an airplane and all at once it starts shaking and everybody's scared and think it's all going to crash and you're going through a thunderstorm and all at once it comes out and all the believers say, well, thank God for that. And the, what's an atheist going to do? They've got nobody to thank. <laughs> we thank God because everything um, ultimately comes from his hand, does it not? So pray with me this morning. Father, today we do have so many things to be thankful for and sometimes we just bundle it all together and we don't think through the specifics and what that really means to us. So I pray that you help us to begin to identify some of the specific things that you've surrounded our lives with because Lord, you have given us it, it will really help us to understand how much you've given us as we start itemizing and taking these things apart and looking at all that we've been given. Help us to be thankful people, O oh Lord. Help us to be thankful. I want to ask you to stay in an attitude of prayer for just a minute and keep your eyes closed and your heads bowed. I, just, you can remain seated, but let me just ask before we go on, something I want to ask every week, not only for you here, but other people watching, to ask, first of all, if your heart is right with God. And let me just remind you again, it's not a complicated thing to get to heaven. The Bible tells us how we can get to heaven. We're talking about the Bible, the Word of God. We're talking about Jesus. And the Bible's about Jesus and about what he's done for us because every other religion and faith system in the world says you have to do things, you have to try, but you never do enough. You never try hard enough. And God's plan is simple enough to say, you know what, I can't do this. I have sin in my life, but I need a Savior. I need somebody to take my sin away. So the Bible tells us Jesus came and died on the cross for our sins. So we say, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. I need a Savior. Forgive me my sins. Come take all my sin away, and 
and I will believe in you and I will trust in you and follow you all the days of my life. And if you haven't said that prayer and you'd like to today, or you say, Pastor John, pray for me because I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I haven't done that before. I want you to just raise your hand right where you are and I'll pray for you right now. If there's anybody here, I'll give you just a moment. But if God's speaking to you and saying, yeah, that's you, you haven't done that, just raise your hand and I'll pray for you. All right. Father, as we come to this place, this week of Thanksgiving, once again, Lord, as followers of Jesus, we should be more thankful than anybody. Let us lead the charge in our families and our lives and those around us this week. And I pray you help us in this moment to find three specific things that we can thank you for and begin a process that will take place, Lord God, every day up till Thanksgiving Day. And Lord, it would be great if it would go beyond, but we can at least do it here for five days. I pray that you help us to truly be grateful to you for all that you've done for us. Thank you, Lord. Now, I want you to just take a few minutes. Just do this quietly. Don't say this out loud. But let's find three things that you, three specific things to be thankful to God for today. I'll give you a few minutes to do that right now. Just think about it. Lord, make us thankful people. Let us mark it. Let that mark us, Lord. We're not going to be critical people. We're not going to be angry people. We're going to be thankful because of all that you've done. We thank you for this time together today, Lord. Be glorified in our lives and in our week. Minister to each person, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, a couple things in closing. What I didn't say, and I should have said this, you need to write these down, so... Maybe before you leave today or when you get home, write them down and get a little piece of paper. You're going to do this all week, three things every day. I'm going to send you some flack notes to remind you. So three things every day. Let's write them down. Once again, don't be in a hurry to leave. We have fellowship uh, over here. Or we have uh, coffee and some treats over on the other side. Um, we'll ask again for just a mask-only area here if you want to stay after the service and talk in the sanctuary. And... Um, Just uh, don't be in a hurry to leave. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. Oh, Mike. We do have masks in the lobby, yes, if you don't have one. Help yourself. Thank you.